Looks like we're a few people short today. Morning, friends. Singcho said he wants to take some time and focus on writing poems, so he'll join us later. Noelle has other duties today, so she asked me to tell everyone not to wait up for her. Okay, well, never mind. What about Kelly Roy, though? She said she'd be here. I got here really early, but I haven't seen her yet. Are you talking about the girl with the blue hair? I saw her on the bridge near Dihua Marsh during my morning training. She looked a little upset, so I didn't want to disturb her. Upset? Oh no, what should we do? Was it something we said last night? Oh, Paimon's worried. I agree. If she's run into some kind of trouble, I'd like to help her. Huh? You're all going? Then I'm coming too! Shall we start with the bridge? We're all here a little early, so there should be time. Good idea! We'll be back in a jiffy! Oh, so this is the place? We ran into her here yesterday too. She looked like something was weighing on her mind then as well. It's also not far from where we were dropping those leaves. Huh. Leaves? Oh, right. We were so busy matching couplets we forgot to mention. Hmm. And I wonder... Could Miss Callie Roy have been the one who wrote that poem on the leaf? Hmm? Huh? What makes you say that? Oh, t sorry. Uh, nothing. Well, uh, nothing concrete. Uh, just a hunch, I guess. It's just... That poem on the leaf kind of gave me the same feeling as when I saw her yesterday. So much sadness. Now that you mention it, this is upstream from where we found the poem. Huh? Hey, look! Over there! Another leaf! Wow, you're right! And this one has writing on it too! After that leaf! I can't swim! What if Paimon accidentally falls into the water? <laughs> we finally caught it. Are the words still legible? Or have they been washed out? Looks like the ink's intact. Let Paimon take a look at what it says. Huh? This is related to the poem we wrote in reply yesterday. She must have picked up one of our leaves. Spring. Young boy. Hmm. It's looking a lot like Callie Roy was the one who wrote this. She seems to care a lot about that story, huh? Actually, when Paimon first saw her, Paimon was wondering, do you think... Is it possible that... She... Based on the current and accounting for wind strength... Everyone, please follow me. It's exactly what I saw the other day. Huh? Uh, why are you all looking at me like that? Oh no, my body, is it? That voice is definitely Kelly Roy's. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, please wait a moment. Oh no, did I use up too much energy? How did you... What's going on here? Miss Kelly Roy... Are you some kind of adeptus? No. I'm so sorry for deceiving you all for so long. Actually, I'm an Oceanid who flowed here from Fontaine long ago. What's an Oceanid? Ah, the Grandmaster has mentioned them before. The Oceanids were the familiars of the former Hydro Archon. Uh, they all fled Fontaine after the Archon died and uh, settled across the world. That's correct. Though, to tell you the truth, I can't even completely recall how I found myself here. 
I have a vague impression of my ancestral home, but I can't recall clearly anything I saw on my journey. All I know is that by the time I arrived in Mondstadt, I had lost most of my power and couldn't even sustain a physical form. Eventually, I settled in a place called Springvale, where I slowly began to regain my power. Springvale is a serene and beautiful place. The water that flows through there is clear and pure, just like the hearts of the people who dwell there. So you're the Spring Fairy of Springvale? Yes, Diona, and I remember you too, you know. When you were little, you often came to the spring at night to speak with me. Really? You're not messing with me, are you? I... Oh, I always thought that was just a local legend. Your favorite little pillow, the fish one? Its name is Bubbles, is it not? Ah, uh, yep! All those childhood memories. <gasps> so they weren't just a dream. So... If this is true, then all those things written on the leaves... I see. So you were the ones who found my leaf. Well, you are correct. The Spring Fairy and Heart of Clear Springs is me. No wonder you were asking us so many questions about it. So, the boy from the story... Is Finch. I always loved listening to people's dreams. And still do, to this day. Whether they're beautiful, sad, or filled with emotions I couldn't understand at the time. One night, a little boy came to the spring. The tears that fell from his face were more fragile than a moonbeam, and purer than the morning dew. I like humans, and wanted to understand them better. I also wanted to make sense of the feelings contained in his tears that were, then, a mystery to me. Yes. We often met under the stars, sharing our stories with one another. Sometimes, we'd stay up all night and see who would hear the first bird chirping from the boughs, or the first cicada of summer. Aww, that sounds lovely! But, one day, just like the book says, I saw an emotion in Finch's eyes that I couldn't reciprocate. I felt out of my depth in uncharted waters. But I knew all too well that we lock folk face a very different fate from that of humans. Whatever was happening, I didn't want it to lead to Finch writing a chapter of his life that he would later come to regret. So, I fled, and never appeared before him again. Oh, Caliroe. My strength returns very slowly, and even after decades, I can only sustain a physical form for a very short time. I once hoped that Finch would be able to move on and meet me when the stars in the night sky have all gone out. But after seeing so many people's stories and hearing about all their dreams, I have gradually come to understand Finch's heart. This feeling of wanting to respond to his feelings is surging relentlessly in my chest, and I can no longer restrain it. But I'm also scared. Scared that if I go and see him now, I'll bring nothing but disappointment. And even more pain when it comes time to part. <laughs> it really is a difficult choice. Mm. Please go see him. Huh? I know Grandpa Finch, and he's a really kind person. When I was struggling to learn how to draw maps, he was always encouraging me. Telling me not to give up, always keep trying, and get out there and have some adventures. He often tells me stories about his past, but I've never once seen a look of regret or sadness in his face. And even though Grandpa Finch loves adventures, he still stands there by the spring, every day, as if he's waiting for something. I believe that he's serious about his feelings for you, Miss Calliroe. He's never stopped hoping that he'll see you again one day. So if you want to see him too, then what are you waiting for? <gasps> huh? Ah, uh, I, I, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit too excited and, and I just thought, well, it just sort of came out. I understand. That settles it. I've decided. I will go back and see Finch. You will? Amazing! That's great! But I 
would like to ask all of you for some help. Sure. Just say the word. We'll help you any way we can. Would you come to Springvale with me and help to bring Finch to my side? I cannot maintain this form for much longer, and I'm worried others will see me how I was just before. Leave it to me! I'm really close with Grandpa Finch! Also, please keep Finch's in my secret. I wouldn't want Springvale's tranquil waters to become agitated on account of all this. Your secret is safe with me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> That's a promise. Great. I can't thank you all at- uh... What's wrong? Are you gonna turn back into a water droplet? No, I'm sorry. It's just that my mind's racing. As much as I want to talk to him again, I'm still worried that I won't have the words when the time comes. A poem? Hmm. Okay, good idea. I'll write him a poem. And it will be called Heart of Clear Springs. <laughs>